What is up guys? It's your friendly neighborhood web war fanatic and today we are ranking all the leadership events in Marvel Champions. So let's go ahead and get started here with our first event. We have the Air Supremacy. This is a two cost event. Here are action choose up to X enemies where X is equal to number of aerial characters you control. Do three damage to each chosen enemy. So uh, we're going to evaluate this card as if we're playing with the aerial deck. So either with the aerial hero or a bunch of aerial allies. And you need to have, um, I mean at worst, this is a two cost for just three damage, right? Because you can choose up to X enemies, and if you only have one aerial character, then you just choose one enemy right here, right? And then uh, you can do three damage to that chosen enemy. And then what's nice is that this is a hero action, not an attack, right? So if you look at all for one right here, it says attack. Uh, the air supremacy is not an attack, so that means it bypasses guard, and it'll bypass retaliate because it's not considered an attack activation. And then, uh, so that's pretty good. So at worst, it's just two for three, which is not the most efficient. And at best, you can clear out a lot of minions, right? If you have a bunch of aerial characters, which could be a little bit hard to do because you need to swarm out your uh, board with a bunch of allies. And then uh, in terms of uh, the limitations on this card, you need to have a lot of minions out on the field if you want to reap the full benefits of this card as well, right? Because if there's only the villain, there's no point doing the AoE damage because there's only one enemy. So because of all those limitations, I'm going to put this in a C tier. I think this is a good situational card and in the correct situation, it can be very powerful for wiping out the board of minions, but uh, that situation is going to be a little bit rare because you need to have a lot of allies and there needs to be a lot of minions to uh, get the full effect of this card. But its floor is not bad, just being a two cost for three damage. Um, yeah, so not a terrible card. Next we have all for one, so it's a two cost event. Hero action attack, so this one is an attack, so you can't uh, hit the villain if a minion has guard. And uh, this will trigger retaliate. Do three damage to an enemy, so same exact thing um, as the air supremacy, just two for three at its worst. And then uh, exhaust any number of Avengers characters you control. Do one additional damage to an enemy for each character exhausted this way. So that's a nice little effect where you can exhaust a bunch of allies to do uh, one more damage for each one, so you can prevent them from taking console damage. But at the same time, if they all just attack, uh, then you might be able to probably do more damage unless they all have one attack. You know, to the enemy so it's going to be a little bit less damage but preserving your allies for another round so they don't take consequential damage so uh not a terrible card i'm gonna put this behind air supremacy and now i'm evaluating this card uh, as if we're playing with avengers and this one as if we're playing with area i do think that the aoe is a little bit more useful than just condensed attack because the condensed attack is not that much it's just one additional damage and the allies are probably going to do more um anyways if they actually just make a basic attack themselves so this card can be useful in a situation where you don't want your allies to take consequential damage but other than that i don't think it's that good of a card because two for three is not the most efficient next we have avengers assemble a four cost event max one per round hero action ready each avenger character you control until the end of the phase each avenger character in play gets plus one thor plus one attack so i'm going to evaluate this card as we're playing with an avengers deck and i think that it's very, very expensive. Um, the effect itself is definitely an A tier effect, right? With the readying and the plus one Thor plus one attack. But I'm going to slide down the B tier. Um, I don't think it's as situational as these cards here, although it is pretty situational, right? And the only thing that makes it situational is that it's a four cost event. So it's very, very hefty, um, very hefty cost to pay. But I mean, this would be, this effect is useful every single turn. It's always going to be good. Uh, assume that you have you know an Avengers hero, um, it raises up your hero as well. You get plus one Thor, plus one attack on each Avengers character, including your hero. So I mean that's an invaluable effect. The more allies you have, the more powerful it is. If you can pay for it, the more powerful uh, it is. Um, yeah, the only thing that's holding it back is the cost here, but this is a very very good effect. Next we have Blaze of Glory, two cost event, max one per round. Hero action: each Guardian character gets plus two Thor and plus two attack this phase. At the end of the phase, do one damage to each Guardian character. So uh, this card, kind of similar to the Avengers Assemble, except it's much cheaper being two cost, and then it's for Guardians. And then uh, you get plus two Thor, two attacks, so a lot more um, than just one, but no readying. You need to take a damage. I'm going to put Blaze of Glory in the A tier. I actually think it is a league above a Avengers Assemble because of this two cost right here, which makes it much cheaper. And you can use this at almost every single turn, right? It's every character, so assume that we're playing with a Guardian character. You do need to have Guardian allies as well, but they all get that plus two Thor, plus two attack at the end of the phase. So, uh, and at the end of the phase, do one damage to each Guardian character. So I'm kind of evaluating this card 
similar to the Avengers Assemble, right? So for the Avengers Assemble, let's say you have an ally with uh, one attack, right? Like if you have some cheap allies, the ally can attack for one, and then you can ready up with Avengers Assemble, and then it gets plus one attack, you can attack again for two, for a total of three damage out of that ally. For Blades of Glory, you give that ally plus two attack, that one attack ally, so they have three attack now, and they just swing one time. You take two cost crushing damage with the Avengers Assemble because of two uh, activations, Blaze of Glory, just one activation, you take one Consequence of Damage, and you do one damage back to that Guardian character, right? So they kind of equal all in that type of sense. If you have stronger allies, like allies that have like 3 attack, 4 attack, then you get more benefit from the Avengers Assemble. But if you have weaker allies, I think the Blaze of Glory is going to be a little bit better because of its cheap cost. Um, so it powers up your stats more. And then I think being 2 cost allows it uh, to be easier. Uh, to, it's easier to play being a 2 cost card. And if you're uh, playing Star-Lord Leadership with Guardians, right, I think Blaze of Glory becomes an Esther card. I think Star-Lord Leadership, uh, Blaze of Glory is an all include because uh, Star-Lord has an effect here where he pretty much, let's see, we're looking at the hero Star-Lord. So star has an effect, each ally you control gains a Guardian trait. So, I mean, he makes all of his uh, allies Guardians, which makes Blaze of Gl Glory always good for even like non-Guardian allies because they are Guardians now with Star-Lord. And then with the other effect, do one damage to each Guardian character. Starla is a Guardian in hero form, and he makes all your allies Guardian in hero form. But when you flip down to Alter Ego, he's no longer a Guardian. He's just an outlaw, and none of your allies become Guardians as well if he's making them a Guardian. So that's an easy way to prevent that one damage uh, to all your Guardians at the end of the phase. Just flip down before your turn ends. So I think yeah, it's a very powerful card. S tier for Star-Lord, A tier for uh, any other Guardian in leadership. Next we have Call for Aid. Zero cost event, hero action is card cards from the top of the deck until you discard an Avenger ally. Then add that ally to your hand. So this is this is a very powerful card. I'm gonna put this card in the A tier here as well. Because if you're playing this card, you don't need to play this card if you don't need an ally, right? But you're literally calling for aid and assume that we are playing with Avengers allies, right? It's an easy way if you have like a hand size of, you know, five and you wanna get an ally to your hand, just play the card for aid and you're gonna get that ally up to your hand. And if you're playing a deck that has anything where you want to mill it, so if you have like um, you have like digging deeps in your deck, right here, uh, after this card is this card from the top of your deck, add to your hand, right? If you have anything like that that synergizes with milling the deck, call for eight is going to help that and synergize very well with that. And then uh, not only that, but then you get that add to your hand. So if you're playing call for eight and losing that card, you get it right back and you get an ally. You can't choose the ally, but you can kind of manipulate your deck in a type of way to make sure you get the ally right like if you only have a few allies in your deck that are all powerful uh, versus if you're just swarming your deck with allies if you have a bunch of allies in your deck you probably don't want to use call for aid because you don't know which one you're going to get um, but uh, if you have only a few allies and you want those few allies in your, in your hand call for aid is going to be very very good and i mean at worst it just gets an ally and mills your deck and it's one uh, less card that's going to be in your deck and then at best i mean it's it's tutoring you that Avengers ally that you really, really need uh, constantly, right? So I think this is a very good card, and definitely a card that you can build around. Next we have Eternity, two cost event. Shuffle this card into the encounter deck without looking, right? So you pay two costs to play this event, and then when you play it, you shuffle it into the encounter deck. Then whenever this card is re uh, one reviewed effect right here, right? So it's whenever you reveal it in the encounter deck, just draw one card and then remove this card from the game, then this effect cannot be canceled. So the eternity is kind of like you pay the two costs up front, nothing happens, and then later on, if you get this card as your encounter card, then you can get a benefit and you don't have to take the actual encounter card. So that's a very nice effect to mitigate uh, taking an encounter card that, that uh, encounter phase. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it's very good. I'm going to put this card in the D tier here. And the reason for that is you really need to have a lot of luxury, right? That means that early game or mid game, right, when you play this card, you need to have a turn where, you, where you're just like, okay, you know what? I don't need to deal with the villain's pressure. I can afford two costs to play this card and have nothing happen immediately. Then later on, it's not even guaranteed that this will happen because if you get this card as a boost card, sure, it's a boost of zero, but then you don't even get this effect. So the, the effect is guaranteed. It's not guaranteed, so you might play the entire game and never get the effect to draw a card. And you're paying the two costs to, um, to possibly get nothing. So I think that this card goes in D tier for me. It's definitely not a card that uh, I would ever use because even if you do get it out, I mean, it's not guaranteed that you're gonna trigger the effect. 
But if you do show you the effect, it's not that bad, you know, probably B tier. Um, but yeah, for two costs, I think it's okay. Uh, not the best card. And definitely not a card that uh, is gonna get much use for me. Next, we have a four cost event, Flying Formation, Alliance. So you can pay for this card uh, with your group. So members can help you, members of your group can help you pay for it. So it's expensive, but not that bad in multiplayer. Here, action ready up to three area characters. So very, very good considering when you're playing with an aerial deck, you can get it ready on your hero, ready up on some allies or other aerial characters if you're playing with some other uh, aerial people. So this card is going to be hard for me to rate. I'm going to put it in the B tier. Uh, this is kind of where I put multiplayer cards because I think for multiplayer with a bunch of aerial characters, fly formation is, you know, A to S tier. And in solo, it's like, you know, C to D tier. So not that good. So I'm just going to put it in the B tier, kind of the uh, middle ground. And uh, yeah, I think this is a fair spot to put it uh, because it changes so wildly uh, depending on the player count. Next we have Get Ready. So one of the OG uh, events in the core set, zero cost event, action, ready up an ally. So super duper simple. It's not a hero action, so you can play this card in Arch Eagle or hero form. Very versatile effect. Um, I'm gonna put this card first in the B tier. I think it's very, very solid. It's, it's usually going to be useful. Unless you the ally, so a ready for ally is much less valuable than a ready for a hero because allies take consequential damage. If you're playing this on an ally that takes no consequence, no consequential damage, this is invaluable. You know, this is going to be an A tier, S tier card. Unfortunately, most allies do take consequential damage, so most of the time this card is not going to be uh, as useful, but still it's going to be very, very good because uh, you get a second activation on the ally. It can be a thwart or attack, but they'll take a consequential damage. And you don't want to play it if it causes that ally to get defeated because you uh, most of the time, at least the way I play, I prefer to get the full benefits of that ally and have them chump block at the end instead of just having them activate to get defeated because chump blocking might block 10 to 15 damage versus their activation it may just be, you know, one or two or uh, thwart or attack. So I think that uh, this card is, is going to be useful a lot of the times, but um, and definitely if I have an empty rush spot in the deck, I wouldn't mind putting get ready in. But I think that because most allies do take consequential damage, um, yeah, I mean, this card's gonna be better with allies that don't take consequential damage. Uh, yeah, but definitely not a bad card and a very good effect to get it ready. I would just prefer it on a hero, of course. Next we have Go All Out. This is a two cost event. Requirement is you gotta spend at least one energy resource when paying for this card. As a hero action, exhaust your hero, deal damage to an enemy equal to the total of your hero's thwart, attack, and defense values. So I have a buddy uh, who loves this card and he loves playing this card with Ironheart here and let me actually pull up Ironheart so on her final stage um, so the Ironheart hero uh, there's no image but on the final stage here she has three Thor, two attack and two defense and you can buff that up as well but right here it's going to be you know three two three which is a combined of eight so if you're playing go out with Ironheart you have to exhaust her and you can do eight damage for just two cost which is not that bad. But the reason I don't like this card is because you have to exhaust your hero. So she can already just swing for two. So you have to kind of minus that out whenever you're calculating the damage. So instead of being a two cost for eight damage, it's really a two cost for six uh, damage because you can have Ironheart just swing for two with her basic attack activation. So because of that, I'm not the biggest fan of this card. And that's for Ironheart who has very, very high stats all around. Most heroes have a combined stat line of six. So this would be two for six, but actually two for four if they have a tackle two. So I don't think this is the best card. You can get a lot of benefits if you buff up your hero stats a lot, but that's a pretty um, contingent, like that's a pretty big limiting factor in my opinion. So I'm actually put this card in the C tier and I'll put it last. I think it's uh, a very situational card. You have to really build around it to uh, maximize its full benefits and buff up your stats to really uh, get the, uh, the full benefits of this card. Next we have go down swinging. So this is a zero cost event, hero action, discard an ally you control, do damage to an enemy equal to that ally's printed cost. So this is a uh, pretty unique card. Uh, I do like it. So it works best with expensive allies. Um, and I, I, because of that, I think it's gonna be a little bit more situation, right? Let's say you play a five cost ally. Um, I don't know, let me think of a five cost leadership ally, like maybe uh, Captain Marvel. Right, so we look at the Captain Marvel leadership ally right here. She's five cost, she has four hit points, right? So if you play her, you don't wanna play this card right away, right? You want her to attack, take two consequential, two consequential damage, then maybe thwart, and then take one more, so she has one hit point left. And then you wanna play go down swinging, 
So it's zero cost event. You can discard Captain Marvel here and then do damage to an enemy equal to her printed cost, which is five. So then you can do five damage for just, you know, a zero cost event, but you're losing that ally. So the way that I kind of look at it is that when Captain Marvel has one hit point, she's very valuable to me as a chump blocker to block 10 damage or, you know, whatever the villain is, is, is hitting me at, right? So it, it this card right here, the go down swing, doesn't have synergy with chump blocking, which is one of the most powerful tactics in Marvel Champions. So I'm not going to rate it that high because of that reason. But if you're playing a deck where you don't need chump block for whatever reason, then this card could be more valuable. But even then, it's a little bit rare because it's an event, right? So you need to play the ally. You need to activate a couple of times to get his hit point down to one. And then you play a go down swing because you don't want to play this card when Captain Marvel still has full hit points right here, right? Because then you're missing an activation out of her. So... Yeah, this is a kind of a situational card, but one thing that's nice about it is that it's a hero action. It's not an attack, so it does bypass guard and retaliate. But even uh, with that, I don't think it's the best card. I'm going to put this... I'm going to still put it first in the C tier, because these cards here I don't think um, are going to get much light compared to like just regular identity-specific attack events, right? Even this one's not an attack event, I think that, that gets you some more use. This can be very, very efficient being, you know, zero for five, but you had to discard that ally and you lose that potential chump blocker. So just outweighing the cost, but in situations where you don't need a chump blocker, uh, this is definitely more valuable. Next, we have Inspiring Presence, a one cost event. Play only if your identity has the Avengers trait. We're gonna evaluate this as if we're playing with an Avengers hero. Hero action, heal one damage from an ally and then ready it. Um, yeah, I don't think this card is very good. I'm gonna put it in the D tier, but definitely above Eternity. So it's one cost, to get a heal and a ready and it must be in hero form only because it's a hero action. So this is very similar to get ready here, right? But this is zero cost, you just ready an ally and you can use this one in Ultra Eagle. It's nice to heal one because you can offset that consequential damage, but then you gotta pay a cost for that ready, which I think is pretty hefty. Um, yeah, so I don't think the one heal is gonna be worth the extra cost from the zero cost of get ready. Uh, so yeah, definitely not a card that I would like to use that much. Like I said earlier, I don't think readying an ally is as is nearly as valuable as running up your hero and then healing an ally i mean the healing for one is good for an ally but i mean yeah just you got to pay a whole a whole resource for it and you gotta play this card so two effective resources i don't think this is the best card in the world and i don't think i'm gonna get much use out of it next we have a four cost event joining forces alliance so you can pay with this card as a group as well hero action as a group the players put a total of one avenger ally and one guardian ally into play uh from their hands so this is a very, very good card in multiplayer, uh, way too expensive in solo. So same as the fly information, but I like it more than the fly information because um, you can ignore the cost of powerful allies, right? An Avenger ally and a Guardian ally. So you have two like five cost allies. You put them both into play, ignoring their cost. You, all you gotta do is pay for the joint forces, but you can pay for it as a team, right? If this is solo, I mean, you got to pay four costs for this card and you need to have an expensive Avengers ally and Guardian ally all in your hand at once because you're the only player. Um, that's going to be a very rare occasion, I think. But um, definitely multiplayer, you know, A tier, S tier, solo, probably a D tier. So I'm just going to put it here in the B tier. I think that's a good, uh, a good like, you know, rounding out for it. Next we have Last Stand, zero cost event, hero interrupt. When an ally you control attacks, it gets plus three for that attack. Uh, after, that ally, after that attack resolves, discard the ally. So that ally can really make one final, you know, big attack and then it gets discarded. So this card is pretty good in final push, but I think in not a final push, it's really only going to help out for minions because you don't want that ally, ally discarded. I'm going to put it in the C tier. I think it's situational. I think I'm going to put it right here. Um, yeah, it's very similar to go down swinging. I think that if you build around last stand, you can definitely get a lot of good benefits out of it, right? Like if you have a rapid response, you get that ally back, trigger its effect again because it got defeated, it can attack again. You can maybe play another last stand on it, right? Then you get then you're getting a lot of damage off. But um, yeah, I mean, other than that, if you're just playing a random deck, if I have an empty roster spot in a random leadership deck, I'm not going to include last stand. I don't think that it fits in a lot of situations, in a lot of normal situations, unless you're really preparing for it. So that's why I'm putting the C tier. I think it's a situational card. Next, we have two cost event. Lead from the front. Hero action, choose a player. Each character that player controls gets plus one Thor, plus one attack until the end of phase. So a very uh, basic card, but getting plus one Thor, plus one attack. I mean, it's kind of, to me, a worse version of Blaze of Glory, right? Because Blaze of Glory gives uh, two, which is way bigger than one. 
Um, you can choose any player. So if you're doing multiplayer, you can pick anyone. I think this is a C tier card. It's situational. Um, it can be useful. I'm going to put it above Air Supremacy and behind Last Stand here. So yeah, getting that plus one. I mean, it's every, every character, so your hero gets that stat bonus as well. It's definitely, the effect is definitely always going to be useful. It's just how much use can you get out of it because uh, just for one turn. Um, and it's not enough to make a big push because you have stuff like Avengers Assemble and Blaze of Glory, which is way, uh, which has way bigger uh, effects for making a big push. So I think leader from, from the front, it's a little ex expensive for what it is, right? Blaze of Glory is cheap for what it is. Avengers Assemble is a little bit expensive. And then uh, the lead from the front, it's, the effect is just not that much to uh, merit two costs for it. And it's an event, so it has to be, you have to have it uh, in your hand whenever you're, you're ready to play it. But it's definitely an effect that can help out uh, in the correct situation. I think it's just situational. Okay, so next we have Made the Call. And this is a lot of people's favorite cards for leadership. And I could definitely see this card as a staple in any leadership deck. Zero cost event, action, pay the printed cost of an ally in any player's discard pile. Put that ally into play under your control. So this card definitely jumps up. Um, it's either going to be A tier or S tier. And let's see. So part of me wants to put it in A tier because whenever I'm deck building, I prefer to have, I play many leadership decks where I don't include make the call because I'd rather have an ally. If the villain is giving you a lot of pressure, make the call is one extra resource, right? One extra effective resource because you have to play make the call, then so pay that printed cost of that ally, right? Um, versus if you just draw an ally, you just play uh, that ally's cost like by itself. So I do think that this card is a little overrated in solo, um, but I think in multiplayer, it's so good because you can pay the printed cost of an ally in any player's discard pile. So you can summon up a, um, a uh, another player's ally. So if they have an identity specific ally that's very powerful, you can get that as well. So I think because of that multiplayer factor, I'm gonna put made the call in the S tier, but I think for solo, it's more of an A tier card, but all rounded out, I think it is an S tier card. Um, it's an all include for multiplayer. In solo, I think that you almost want to include it in almost every leadership deck, but not every single one. Um, and one thing to know about this card is that when you pay the printed cost of an ally in any player's discard pile, you get to ignore that ally's requirements, right? So, uh, an example, let me, uh, we can do like Peter Parker. So, if we do uh, the Peter Parker basic ally right here, the Web Warrior, the requirement to play him is an energy resource mental resource and a physical resource. So when you play him, you need to use one of each one. But if you're using mate the call, he's in a discard pile, you can ignore this stuff and all you gotta do is pay three costs for a Peter Parker Spider-Man. So that's a really nice thing about mate the call, you can bypass those uh, nasty requirements that you might need for some specific allies. So I think it's definitely an Esther card. I do think it is a little bit overrated for um, for solo, but I mean, overall it's still definitely a really, really powerful card. Okay, next we have Mass Attack. Three cost event, hero action, exhaust three allies you control that share a trait with your hero. Do extra damage to an enemy, where X is equal to the total attack of those allies and your hero. So one thing I like about this card is that you don't have to exhaust your hero, right? But it's very, very similar to the uh, go all out, except instead of, exhaust, instead of getting the uh, combined attack, uh, thwart, and defense side of your hero card, it's getting the combined attacks of three allies and your hero. The rough thing about this is that it's three costs, so it's pretty expensive, and you, you have to exhaust three allies because there's a cost arrow. So the stuff before the cost arrow, you must do to trigger this effect. So you need to have at least three allies out, and you exhaust all of them to do that damage. So in a situation where you can't get that effect, this can be a powerful card, but I think that that situation is, is uh, not gonna be often because, yeah, and it's gonna be, yeah, I, I'm gonna put this behind the goal out, I just think it's too rare of a situation to get those three allies out um, and then they all have to, have to share a trait with your hero, right? So even if you're playing a specific type of deck, right? Like an Avengers deck or whatever, you need to have all other allies be Avengers, right? You, you can't include like a Maria Hill to have her get the effect of this as well. So uh, it's gonna be a little bit more restrictive. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's if you get the full benefits, it can be very powerful. You can do a lot of damage, right? It's a mass attack, which really feels that way. And it's really cool that you don't have to exhaust your uh, identity. So you can still have your hero uh, Thor attack or like, you know, if they're in Austria, you could, they could recover before you flip over to use this effect. 
But yeah, overall, I still think it's a very situation card, so I'm gonna put that in the C tier. Next, we have Mission Playing, a two cost event. Play only if there's a side scheme in the victory display. Hero action until the end of the phase, as you control, do not take consequential damage. So this card, I think, is your definition of a situational card. I think most of the time it's not gonna be that good. I don't think that this is uh, the side scheme thing is that restrictive because you can just uh, play for it and play uh, put some player side schemes you know in your deck or play with someone else that uses player side schemes. Um, but as you you control, do not take consequential damage. You really want allies to have multiple activations on allies that are taking consequential damage to get the full effects of this, or have a bunch of allies out at once. So yeah, this card very very situation. I'm inclined to put it in the D tier. Um, but yeah, I do want to give some shout outs here to Villain Theory. He made a video talking about, you know, how this card can be good. And shout outs to Brian V too. He made this awesome deck with uh, Cable, where it utilizes, uh, uh, it's called Uncle Alex, and, you, and it utilizes uh, the uh, Havoc ally. Let me pull him up. Um, am I not typing his name right? Havoc is his name, right? Uh, let me see, Marvel Champions Havoc ally. Uh, oh, I spelled his name wrong. He has a K there. Okay, yeah, so the Havoc Alley right here. When Havoc attacks this card, the top card of the encounter deck, for each boost icon this card this way, he gets plus one attack for the attack, but it takes one more consequential damage. So this is a card that has so much synergy with that, the mission playing, right? Because you are uh, preventing all your allies from taking consequ consequential damage um, until the end of the phase. So that's a great way to have Havoc do a lot without taking consequential damage. Um, but... That being said, I feel like this card is so hard to use. Um, and even if you get the full benefits of it, so I mean, it feels like a C tier card because it's so situational, but even if you reap the full benefits of it, I think that benefit is still a, beard, a B tier level effect, right? A lot of these C tier cards, if you can get the full benefits, it's like an A tier level effect. But for mission planning, I mean, I think at best, and you have to plan so much around it to get that turn set up, and then the effect is not even going to be that valuable. It's going to be really, really fun and unique, but I don't think it's going to be as powerful. So because of that, I'm going to actually put in the D tier, which feels kind of bad. Um, but yeah, I don't think this is this this card is going to not definitely not get that much use from me at all. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate the uh, the uniqueness of it, um, but just not my favorite card in terms of power. So I'm putting it in D tier. Next we have morale boost. One cost event hero action, choose a hero. Until the end of the round, that hero gets plus one attack, uh, plus one thwart, and plus one defense. So, um, not a bad card. You can play on any one in multiplayer, so that's nice. You have to choose a hero. Um, it's just a you know, plus one to all your stats for one cost. Uh, that's always going to be useful. It's just not that impactful. So I'm going to put this last in the C tier here. Right, The impact is very, very low. If you have stuff that synergizes with that, right? If you play a morale boost, it's gonna do wonders for go all out, right? Because then you get uh, three more damage on it. But at the same time, these are both events that you need to have in your hand. You play them both at once. Um, it's gonna do a lot of attack, but you can't really do anything else during that turn, right? It'll exhaust your hero as well. So if you can line that up for your big turn to do damage, it could be good. Um, but at the same time, I don't. I feel like it's gonna be a very situational card. So I'm gonna put it last here. Uh, behind all these other C tier cards. Next we have Moxie, zero cost event. Hero responds after you change form. Your hero gets plus one Thor, plus one attack, and plus one defense until the end of the round. So very similar to the uh, morale boost, you're getting plus one to all your stats. Uh, but I do like Moxie a little bit more. I'm gonna put Moxie in the C tier, just behind go down uh, swinging. And Moxie, I think it's so situational because you wanna be playing a hero that has a lot of uh, flipping, right? Like form chaining stuff, right? So if you're playing Ant Man. Uh, let me look up or pull up Ant Man here. So if you're playing Ant Man. He can change from this hero form to this. Wait, where is it? To uh, ooh, I'm not seeing the big one. Uh, anyways, so this is this is supposed to be the uh, giant Ant Man, right? So uh, let me pull the Wasp to see if uh, her image is there, because I do like looking at the images. Um, yeah, okay, so Wasp here, right? So I think uh, Moxie is very good for heroes like Ant-Man and Wasp because when you change form, you get plus one to other stats as a hero response. Most of the time, you can only change from Alter Ego to hero form to get that plus one because it has it's a hero response, right? So you can only trigger it whenever you're in hero form. But when you're playing Wasp, you can change from this hero form 
to this hero form and then trigger the moxie. You can also ch uh, change from her giant wasp form back to her tiny form and still trigger that moxie. So I think it's a lot more valuable for heroes that have multiple hero forms. Um, and it can change a lot. Um, so that's why I, I think moxie is a pretty situational card. Um, but you can still use it on heroes that change forms regularly. And even if you are playing those heroes that change forms a lot, that plus one to all your stats may not be as useful unless you're also getting a lot of raids as well, right? Because if you play a monster, you get plus one more Thor, one attack, one defense, but you're just going to activate one time. So one activation is not going to be the biggest deal. Um, but if you can get a lot of readies, then that plus one Thor is going to help out a lot, right? So it just kind of depends. Uh, I think it's it's very, very good, a very powerful card, but situational. So it goes here in the C tier. And I'm actually going to put it first in C tier. I think it's... There's more situations where Mox is going to be good better than go down swinging, but um, still going to be a pretty situational card. Next, we have Psychic Kicker, a zero cost event. Play only if your Denny has a psionic trait, so we're going to evaluate this card as if we're playing a psionic hero. Hero action, ready an ally. That ally gets plus two Thor, plus two attack uh, for its next basic Thor or attack action this phase. So, not for the whole round, just one time. But, I mean, that's still so powerful. I'm going to actually put the Psychic Kicker. In the A tier, and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna actually put it above Blaze here. So I think if you are playing a psionic hero in leadership, psychic kicker's gotta be an auto include because it's a zero cost event. Just like get ready, you ready up that ally, but the ally gets plus two thwart and plus two attack. So I mean that is invaluable buffing up the ally stats that way. It's effectively zero cost to get. You know, two attack, two two Thor, add to where the ally's um, you know stats are right. So if the ally has one Thor, one attack. This is a zero cost, um, zero cost event to get three, and then uh, because that you ready up that ally, so ally gets to do where they they want, and then you ready back up to do that again, right? It could be bad if you know the ally has to take consequent damage to get defeated. You don't want that happening, but other than that, I mean, if the ally can live uh, two activations, psychic kicker is going to always be valuable. I mean, two is massive for a stat. And I mean, Blaze of Glory, I think Blaze of Glory, if you're playing a Guardian deck that's not Star-Lord, I mean, you still almost always want the Blaze of Glory, but I think for Psionic uh, leadership uh, heroes, I think the Psychic Kicker is even more valuable. I think this is a very, very good card. Obviously, Psychic Kicker is only for one, and Blaze of Glory is for your whole entire team if everyone's a Guardian. But the cool thing about Psychic Kicker is that your ally does not have to have the psionic trait, only you need to have the psionic trait. So you can play this on any ally. So I do think this is one of the uh, uh, best leadership events in the game, especially if you're playing a, uh, a psionic, or you have to be playing a, a psionic hero. But yeah, this is a very, very powerful card. And, and I like the thematics of it too, right? With the Jean Grey buffing up an ally um, by giving them a psychic kicker. Okay, so next we have push ahead, three cost event. Requirement is an energy resource, so you gotta spend at least an, one energy resource when paying for this card. Hero action, Thor, exhaust your hero, remove threat from a scheme, equal to a total of your hero's Thor attack and defense values. Um, so this card, I think, is similar to the mass attack, similar to the go out, but it's a Thor version. Um, and I, I think it's much worse, actually. I'm going to put it down here in the D tier. Uh, I'm going to put it right here. So it's similar to the go all out. So this card right here, where it's exhausting your hero and you remove threat equal to the combined um, stats of your heroes you know thor attack and defense values it's one cost more than the um go out the, the attack version of it which makes sense because throwing is more valuable than attacking but i mean that one extra cost that is a pretty hefty cost um yeah because i think three is makes it a lot more expensive to play than two is and three costs for a thor event that's concentrated thor I think that's much more useful in multiplayer, but even then, I don't think it's going to be the most useful card because you have to exhaust your hero and all that stuff. And in, in solo, this card is like almost unplayable. So I'm going to put this in a D tier here. Next, we have uh, another one cost event ready for action. Hero action, given ally control a tough status card. So this card, uh, toughs are definitely more viable on your hero than on an ally, right? Because allies are a little bit slower. Uh, usually you want the toughness to block an attack from the villain. You don't want it. Um, you don't want consequential damage to take off the tough stats card. So you want your ally to activate. Uh, so exhaust and activate, and you play ready for action to give them a tough. They ready back up. 
during the villain phase and you have an exhausted defend and then the attack goes on a tough and then for your next player phase the ally will stay exhausted so uh, obviously it would be a lot better if your hero got the tough so then you don't, you don't have to exhaust anyone to uh have the tough block off but uh, i'm gonna put this card ready for action um i'm gonna put this right here i think it's better than uh these cards here but i think it's not going to be as useful as these cards just because it's a little bit more slow i think these cards have more potential for like a big uh, type of like turn and i think they're ready for action it's going to be a little bit um like the flooring is pretty good with this card but i think the max ceiling for this card you're not gonna get too much benefit out of it it's pretty much just going to be giving an ally a toughness to have them block but at the same time you could just play another ally like another cheap ally that's two cost have that ally like you know activate and have the ally chump block and uh yeah most of the time unless the villain has overkill i don't think the tough is going to be more valuable than a chump block uh for that ally so because of that reason i'm gonna put this in a c tier here a situational card can be good um i think but it's going to be situational next we have save the day it's a one cost event hero action discard an ally you control remove threat from a scheme equal to the ally's printed cost so this is the thor version of go down swinging um, but similar to the uh, similar to the push ahead and the uh, go all out here, the uh, save the day is one more cost than a go down swinging. So it's the same effect where you're discarding that expensive ally, and then you want to uh, you know have its remaining hit points like take advantage of it. So you're doing one final thing before they get defeated. But I mean, one cost and the other cost is to discard the ally, uh, obviously, right? So. That's just a lot more cost for this card. Uh, I think this card is similar to the go down swinging, but also worse, just like the push ahead. I'm gonna put this here. I don't think it's as bad as push ahead because it's much cheaper just being one cost. But at the same time, I mean, if the ally is a five cost ally, it has the same problems as go down swinging, except in addition to that you have to pay one extra cost for it. And I think that bypassing stuff like guard and retaliate is going to be a little more valuable than just bypassing a patrol. Uh, so yeah, I think this card is not as good uh, for the same reason as going on swing, but worse because thwarting and extra cost. Next we have sneak attack, a one cost event. Action, choose an ally in your hand that shares a trait with your identity. Put that ally into play. If that ally is still in play at the end of the phase, discard it. So this is a one cost card. You play the card as a resource, right? So that's two effective resources. And then you have to choose an ally in your hand. So that's the third card. So it's going to be three effective resources to get out an ally, any ally that shares a trait with your identity. So if you're playing like a shield character, I mean, and you get Nick Fury out, I mean, he's four costs and you're using three cards to get him out. Um, I think that can be pretty good. And then uh, cool things with this card is with, with rapid response, right? If the ally is still in play at the end of the phase, discard it. When you discard an ally, you can get it back in with rap response, and then it'll stay forever. Uh, so sneak attack, I think it's actually a pretty cool card. Uh, a situation card still. I'm going to put it behind Moxie. I think that its ceiling is very, very high if you uh, you know build around it. But I think that if you don't build around it, it's definitely not as good of a card. It has a lot of like... Uh, limitations here especially with the trait right so even if you are playing like you know an x-men deck with a bunch of x-men allies you might have one or two uh, allies that aren't x-men like a nick fury and obviously the sneak attack will not be able to uh, target nick fury uh so yeah i mean i think it's still a very good card uh very high ceiling if you uh plan around it next we have strength in numbers a zero cost event as the action exhausts any number of allies you control draw one card for each ally exhausted this way so this is an insanely powerful effect but it's going to be a little bit situational, right? So if you want to maximize this card's effect, you want to build up your ally limit. So you'll want things like uh, the Triskelion. Triskelion. So this is a one-cost support. Increase your ally limit by one. And you'll probably want things like uh, Avengers Tower, right? If each of your allies has the Avengers trait, increase your ally limit by one. And probably an ally like a Stinger. So right here, uh, she does not count towards your ally limit. So you get all of that out. You can have, potentially have six allies. And then if you play this card, exhaust all six, and you can draw six cards, which can be invaluable. Uh, but they do get exhausted. But what's nice is that you don't have to exhaust your hero. So I think it's a super duper situation because you want to swarm the board with allies. And if you have that many allies, 
most of the time, I think you're probably already winning. So I think this might be a little bit of a win more type of card. Um, I'm going to put this in the B tier. I think it's still powerful, but uh, no, I'm actually put it, I'm put it in C tier, but first in the C tier. I think the effect can be powerful. It could be like an A tier or S tier level effect, right? Drawing all of those cards, but you really have to build around it. You really need the Triskelion. You need to have all those allies out. Um, even if you don't have the Triskelion and Stinger and all this stuff out, your ally limit's still three, so you still need to have three allies out. And oftentimes against the more difficult scenarios like Venom Goblin or Ronin, I cannot even get three allies out. So I think, I think it could be a little bit more difficult to get this effect, but if you do get the situational uh, effect out, then I mean, its effect is very, very good. Next we have Summoning Spells. It's a two cost event. Play only if your identity has a Mystic trait. So we're gonna evaluate this card as if we're playing a Mystic character. Hero action, discard cards from the top of your deck until you discard an ally. Put that ally into play under your control. So this card, I mean, if you're playing Mystic, Mystic Leadership, I think this card is an auto-include. Um, I, I think it is an auto-include. If you're playing a Mystic uh, Leadership deck, you have to have this card, right? Yeah, because I mean, it's effectively giving you a free ally. So you're paying two costs, right? And then you play this card. You get the ally into play. At worst, it's a two-cost ally, right? And when you do that, it's the same as just playing that ally and having two costs uh, to, to play the ally. So at worst, you just get the ally out. And then at best, you can get the milling effect with the discarding cards, right? So similar to what we're talking about with Call for Aid, you can get some synergy with, um, with Digging Deep, right? Where you can discard these cards and then I get it to your hand, right? You can get some synergy there. And then at best, it's getting you a three cost, four cost, five cost ally, putting it into play for free. Um, well, not for free, for whatever you pay for something spell, but you can get a lot more net uh, cost benefit out of that. So I think this can be super duper good. Is it as good as made the call for mystic traded characters? I don't know. I think it's close. Um, I'll say this. I think in solo, I think summoning spell is better. Uh, but I think in multiplayer, I think Mate the Call still makes it out because Mate the Call is such a versatile card, right? You can have it target anything you want, right? Like if another player played something like, I don't know, like Hawkeye is an ally that I love getting with Mate the Call because when a minion enters play, you can remove one arrow counter from Hawkeye and do two damage to a minion. So Hawkeye is so good for uh, controlling the board of minions here. So Mate the Call can get an ally that helps you in a specific situation. And in multiplayer, there's so many more players, so so many more allies there's got to be an ally that has a good uh, situational effect that you can use for that situation with Mate the Call, right? You can get any aspects allies, any identity, any identity specific allies. So I think in multiplayer, the versatility of Mate the Call is insane. And I think that makes it an auto-include for leadership in multiplayer, while Summoning Spell is definitely an auto-include for leadership uh, if you're playing Mystic. Next we have Teamwork, Zero Cost Event. Hero Interrupt, when you use your basic Thwart power, or basic attack power, exhaust an ally you control, add that ally's matching power to your hero's power for this use. Uh, this card, I think it's, it has a, I think the ceiling of this card is a little bit low, but the floor is kind of high. So I'm gonna put this card right here behind, leave from the front. So teamwork can be good because you exhaust your ally and you get the ally's stats to your power. So it's a bigger hit and the ally will not have to take consequential damage. So it's pretty effective and it's just a zero cost event. So yeah, that's that's pretty good. But the potential of this card, there's not really anything else there, right? It's just kind of a very straightforward, easy to use card, um, but not a lot of benefits to take out of it. Versus these cards here, if you can maximize the full potential of leaf from the front, last stand, go down swinging, sneak attack, like these cards here, they have a much more high ceiling than teamwork even though teamwork can be used a lot more easily than these other cards. So that's why I'm gonna put it behind them. Um, but yeah, definitely not a bad card and pretty useful in almost every situation uh, for leadership, because you're gonna have allies. Okay, next we have a one cost event. To me, my X-Men, play only if your identity has the X-Men trait. Hero action, search the top five cards of your deck for an X-Men ally and put it into play. If that ally is still in play at the end of the phase, add it to your hand. So this card, I mean, is this an S tier card as well? Yeah, I think to me, my X-Men is an S tier card, right? Evaluating this as if we're playing with uh, an X-Men character. 
Hero action, you search the top five cards of your deck for an X and you put it into play. So one thing to look about this, uh, okay, I'll talk about how good it is first, right? So you're only paying one cost and you can get an ally in for free. It could be a super expensive ally, uh, like a five cost ally, and then it might have an effect, a uh, enter play effect, right? So let's look at Beast, he's an X-Men ally here. So when Beast enters play, search your deck of discard power for a resource card out your hand. So you can pay one cost for to me, my X-Men, play Beast, you get his storing and his attack, right? But he'll also tutor you a resource card up to your hand as well. So, I mean, if you play an ally like him with this card, I mean, that is invaluable. Uh, and, and at the end of the uh, phase, you add this ally beast here back to your hand. So, uh, let's say your hand size is five. At the end of the uh, at the end of your turn, you draw back up to five, and then the end of the phase happens after that. So then you add beast to your hand. You now you have six cards in your hand, and you're, and you're ready to play beast again next turn. So I think that is such a good card because you can basically increase your hand size effectively as well. Um, yeah, the only thing that's holding it back is that you play only if your identity has the X-Men trait. And then, um, well, actually, that's not the thing, that's not the thing, because we're evaluating as if we're playing with, with an X-Men hero, but you have to have X-Men allies, right? So if you're playing an X-Men deck and you have stuff like Maria Hill or Nick Fury in your deck, then it's not going to be as good, because if you get them, you can't uh, put them into play with this effect. You have to get an X-Men ally like Beast. So for Cyclops, I mean, for Cyclops, it's like probably the best thing because Cyclops can include X-Men from any aspect. But um, for anyone else, for any other X-Men, I think this is still an S-tier card. If you're playing Leadership, very, very good. Uh, you just got to make sure that you're playing X-Men Allies, which is a little, a little bit limiting. But I think it's not that bad because X-Men have very powerful allies and you got a lot of powerful um, supports that uh, support the X-Men cards. So very, very good effect. Uh, and I do want to make a note here for... Um, when you put the X-Men into play, right? So if you have someone like uh, Pixie, so Pixie is an X-Men ally. After you play Pixie from your hand, you can trigger this effect to get an X-Men ally from discard power back to your hand. But uh, that would not trigger with the two Mima X-Men because you're putting into play from your deck, right? You have to play Pixie from your hand. So any effect that has to uh, enter play from your hand, uh, you won't get it. But if it's not, like Beast, then you do get that effect. So still a very powerful card. You just need to make sure you have a lot of X-Men allies. Because you're searching the top five cards, if there's no X-Men allies, then you don't get anything. So that could be the biggest drawback of this card. But I think if you're playing this card, you want to have those allies anyways. Allies is, are the strongest card type, so it's always going to be beneficial to have them. Next we have United We Stand, zero cost event. Play only if your identity has the Avengers trait. Hero action, heal one damage from up to X friendly characters, up to a max of three, where X is equal to the villain stage number. So this one's a little bit hard to control. What's nice is that it is free and you're always going to be healing at least one right because the villain's going to be stage number one no matter what so you can heal one damage from anybody right which is pretty good because healing one from an ally is going to be a lot more valuable than healing one from your identity because i can activate again or uh you know take effectively be able to act, yeah just activate again because they're taking um they're going to recover one of their consequential damages and if you can heal a bunch of allies like if the villain's on stage three then that's very very useful um but I think it's still a very situational card. You're only getting one healing. Um, I'm gonna put this, assuming you are playing Avengers, is this a card? No, because you could just play something like a team training, right? So team training, let me look that up. So you could just play a team training where where uh, every ally you, you control gets plus one hit points and this is a support that just stays in play. So. I mean, if you combine team training with United We Stand, it could be, um, that's where you get the full benefits of this. But if you're just running like three United We Stands, you might as well just run a team training instead to get that extra hit point activation. So because of that, I'm gonna put this card a little bit lower. Um, I'm gonna put it right here. I think the tough burn ally is gonna be a little bit more valuable with the ready for action. But United We Stand, I mean, not terrible. Um, the healing is useful for allies. I just don't think uh, it's a little bit hard to get the effect off and how many that you heal because X is equal to the villain stage number. So it might be one, might be two, might be three. And just one damage is not going to be that much. And you need it in your hand, so you need it in the right time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a terrible card. I could definitely see it being useful in the correct situation. Uh, I just don't think there's that many situations for it. Okay, and then lastly, we have our last leadership event, another zero cost card. Play only if your identity has a guardian trait. Max one per round. It's called Welcome Aboard. Hero action, re reduce the resource cost of the next ally played this phase by two. Um, okay, so 
this card to me is kind of like a double resource. So I'm gonna look up a double resource card here like Genius. So Genius is a double resource card, right? It's one card and it's two resources for you to play another card. Welcome Aboard is one card, right? It's zero cost event, so you play it, but it's still one card and you reduce the resource cost of the next ally play this phase by two. So what's nice is that you can just play it and you can wait for it to happen, right? Similar to a heli carrier. But the thing is, at the end of the day, it's still very similar to a genius in terms of that it's one card for getting you two, uh, like a two cost type of reduction type of thing on whatever that you're playing. But the welcome board is limited to a hero action, so you can only play this in hero form. But you could flip over after you play this card and then reduce that cost. So it's not that big of a deal. You just can't play it in your alter ego. And then uh, it's limited to allies. So it's only for allies versus the genius. You can use it for anything, uh, of course. So yeah, I think that makes it a little bit more limiting, but I think Welcome Board can be very good in multiplayer because you can play it and the next ally play this phase might be by your uh, someone else in your group and they get that cost reduction. So that could be useful. But other than that, I don't think it's going to be the most useful card, even if we are evaluating it as if we're playing with a guardian. So it's kind of a double resource if you uh, really need more resources. And I love resources. So I, I do love resources, um, but then is, I think it's just so limiting because it's for allies. So let's see, if I'm playing a guardian leadership deck, is this card a card that if I have an empty roster, I just easily put it in? Or is this a card that I need it? No, you know, I mean, if I'm playing leadership, I'm running allies. I'm hopefully running a lot of allies here. Yeah, okay, I'm going to put this in the B tier. And I'm going to put it be even behind these other um, multiplayer cards because I think this card also gets more benefit out of multiplayer. But yeah, if you're running a Guardian deck in leadership and you're running uh, allies, it doesn't even matter if your group is running a lot of allies, right? Because you, you can use this for them. This card is effectively a double resource, right? So you can just add more resources to your deck. And I love resources, so I think that is going to have a little bit of value there. So I'm putting in a B tier, right? If, if I have an empty roster spot, I would not mind putting the welcome board in. All right, so there we have it. This is my leadership uh, event tier list for all the events in the leadership aspect in Marvel Champions. Uh, this one was pretty difficult for me to make because I think leadership has so many different type of effects through their events. It's very hard for me to uh, rank them all comparing them to one another. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. If you agreed or disagreed with anything, please let me know down in the comments. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.